This software uses AI to build SaaS products in minutes. It's called Bolt.new and it's insane. If you haven't seen it yet, it allows you to build full apps entirely with AI. I have no idea how to code and I've built over 10 plus apps using this platform in the last three weeks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from idea to fully deployed SaaS in just 10 minutes. All right. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're inside of Bolt and what we wanna do is actually type out what we want to build. With this first prompt, we don't wanna to get too specific, but just give a general idea of what you wanna build and some of the functions that you want inside of your application. Here, for example, here's my prompt that I give it. Build me an app that tracks work sessions. Let's call this focus flow. The point of this app is to track work blocks, add tasks completed during the session, and then save those sessions. I want to use this to determine which tasks I spend the most time on and what can be delegated. I'm gonna give it that and let's see the initial prototype it gives us. All right, so Bolt is now in action. You could actually see it writing our code right in front of our eyes, which is pretty amazing to see. It took about a minute or so and it spit out this initial user interface of an app called Focus Flow. You can see there's a timer on the top left. You can see certain tasks that we could add and then it shows the total time that we spent during a session along with tasks completed and at the top category of tasks. And as you can see what I did, I took a screenshot of our app and I basically said, let's make this part of the app a little bit more simple. I would basically want to add tasks completed and then make the category columns have tasks such as admin, content creation, finance, content research, app building, etc. So hopefully this will give us a little bit more of an idea of the structure that we want our focus flow app to go through. Boom, and here we have it. Looks like it actually added some features. This is cool. It actually shows a category of each of our tasks. So we could write in the task title of what we're actually doing. And you could see, I'm basically saying building the app for the video. And it looks like the category tag was set to admin. Let me try it again. So send email to Jane and then click add to an admin task. And then one more thing, we could send thumbnail ideas to editor. Click content creation as a category, add that to the task. And now you can see each of these tasks has its own category in order for us to figure out what we spend the most time on. All right, last task here, you can see I worked on the bolt.new app and the category is app building. I added that and now I have four tasks that were completed in this 45 second session. Okay, so obviously the initial user interface of this app is looking pretty good. We just need to work on the fine details in order to get this to function and work in the exact way we want it to. So I'm gonna type to our agent here, add the ability to end a session because it now doesn't, it allows you to stop the timer, but we need to be able to end and save sessions in order for us to track. All right, now it looks like it added a red button where we could end the session. We could start the session, write the tasks along with the category. It looks like those are working. And we could end the session and you could see it pulls up this new tab here that basically gives us a summary of the session. That's pretty cool. It shows the duration of how long the session lasted, the completed tasks, and then the top category of the most tasks that were completed. So personally, I don't like how it takes us to a separate tab there after the session ends. So I'm gonna give a prompt to our agent. Basically, I'm gonna say, I don't like the flow and how it takes me to a new page. When the session ends, keep it on the normal dashboard. That way, when we end a session, it's just automatically stored right there on that same dashboard instead of taking us to a different page. Looks like we could start a session, we could add our tasks. And then once we end the session, it shows a session complete right there on our main dashboard. Great, now I'm gonna add a prompt and basically say, let's add a session analytics tab where I can track in depth for each session. Let's include all tasks for each day so I could see what tasks were completed throughout each session as well as total tasks for the entire day. So I just wanna be able to track essentially all of my sessions and then be able to see all the tasks that were completed in any given day. It's gonna go ahead and write the code here. And there is a new tab here. You could see right next to the current session and it's an analytics tab. That's pretty cool. Looks like we could start a session, add our normal tasks. And then when we end the session, it shows the analytics of that session. You could see the tasks that were completed, the category of each task. And then you could also see the top category of the tags that were actually used inside of our session. 
Next, I'm gonna say great. Let's now add analytics tracking like pie charts, showing how much time was spent on everything. This is just a user interface thing to get a bit more in depth about each of our sessions so we could see what we spent our time on in a cool way. There we have, it looks like we have a full pie chart here. I don't think that the pie chart's actually reflecting the correct data, but if we add our session, we could add our certain tasks. And then once we end the session, there is a big pie chart here to see how we distributed our time throughout that session. All right, so now I'm gonna prompt our agent and say, whenever a new task is added, mark it as complete. Also, let's add the ability to add how much time is spent on each task category and display it in our analytics. So again, we just wanna get a bit more in depth with kind of our analytics here so we could correctly identify what we spend the most time on. All right, so now inside of our analytics tab, when we scroll down, there's a massive pie chart. So we need to fix this and make this a bit smaller because that's pretty distracting. We don't want it to look like that. The thing that's awesome about Bolt.new is it's so easy to make little user interface changes and add certain features. You could literally just type in what you want and it builds it. And if it doesn't get it the first try, it usually gets it the second try. It's just awesome that you could use a platform like this to kind of build such a simple and cool application. All right, if we try that one more time, you can actually see that the pie chart is a bit smaller now that looks way better. You can see all the tasks that were completed. Now, just playing around with this, let's add a dark mode so we could toggle and make the screen a bit darker. Now it looks like the background of the dashboard is blue that looks pretty cool just nice little dark mode feature you can toggle between the two just have that option if we were to actually launch this as its own SaaS product all right next let's add some other cool user interface features basically i'm going to tell it to add some cool features maybe add a glowing effect when i move my mouse on the screen just to give it a little bit more kind of personality Looks like we're actually getting prompted with a problem. And the cool thing inside of Bolt is if there's a problem that our agent identifies with the code, it usually could just fix that problem in one simple try. So basically I just say fix that problem and it went ahead and fixed it for me. All right, now the app preview is loading and it actually looks like if I drag my cursor on the screen, there's this cool little trail effect that's you know not necessarily something that changes the functionality of the app, but just something like that adds a little cool, like, I don't know, like feature that makes it fun. Real quick, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This channel is AI for non-techie. So if you want to learn all about AI, but aren't a technical person, this channel is perfect for you. So make sure to like the video and subscribe means a lot. All right, now we're taking a step back. It looks like it's not allowing me to add a session. The buttons are not working. So that's one thing with platforms like this is sometimes there's, there's just some issues. If you make some changes, it'll kind of revert back to what it was before you made a previous change. So you just need to play around with it. It should be fixed real quickly with one simple prompt. After playing around with it, I don't necessarily like the cursor drag effect. So let's go ahead and delete it. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to revert back to original version of our app, because that's important. Say you make something and you don't necessarily like the changes, you could always go back and just delete it, which is pretty cool. And then again, I also need to let it know that the timer is not letting me start a session or end one. So that's also a problem that we need to fix. Now it looks like that's fixed. So I'm gonna give it another prompt and I wanted to add a feature when adding the time it took for a task. And let's just make it a drag feature. So that way, whenever we complete a task, we could just drag that as opposed to having to type in how many minutes and seconds. I think this will just make for a more intuitive way to interact with our app.
All right, as you can see, it now has a time spent bar here where we can just drag and it goes up to a full hour to basically show how long each task took us. I'm gonna let the agent get a little bit creative here. I'll actually tell it to add some cool user interface features and just get creative. I don't necessarily have any ideas, but I wanna see what it comes up with. All right, so first thing I notice here is the numbers actually bounce up and down. That's kind of cool. And then also there is a glowing effect whenever we hover over a certain card within our app. And then there's some smooth transitions for all of the interactive elements. Animated check marks when completing a task. Those are just some of the cool little changes that our agent made to our app. All right, so now that we got our app functioning basically how we want it to, we could also make some changes after this, but next what we need to do is we need to add the ability for a user to sign into their own account via Google. So this is important if we wanna turn this into our actual SaaS product, where we you know add a Stripe payment before actually having access to our app or something like that. So let's go ahead and basically prompt our agent and tell it that we need to add the ability to sign in via Google. Looks like it's adding a Google authentication thing here. Let's let this encode and then see what the next steps are. All right, so it's actually giving us a list of things that we need to do. It gives us a link to Firebase console. So click on that link or just go to Firebase console. And then we're gonna wanna set up a new project. And let's just follow through step-by-step step what it's telling us to do here. As you can see, I'm coming over to the Firebase console. I'm clicking create new project. Give your project a name and then continue. Make sure to select an account and let's create our project. All right, give that a minute or two. And then once our project is created, let's go ahead and click on our project. And what we need to do is we need to go over to our project settings, come over to the left-hand side where it says build, and then click on the authentication dropdown. From there, we want to actually go up to our sign-in method and we need to enable Google. So click on Google, click enable, make sure you follow through step-by-step step what I'm doing here. Make sure to add it and then save. And then after that, you need to do the exact same thing for email and password. So that way we could let users sign up via their email or password, just like any other application. All right, now that that's set up, we need to go back up to our project overview up here. So come to our project settings and then scroll down to where your, it shows your apps and make sure to click on this little web icon. When you click on this web icon, we need to add Firebase to our app. So let's make sure to register our app, give it a name, click continue. And then from here, you're gonna see this code, but do not worry. All you need to do is copy and paste this exact code here that you see on your screen. So where it says const Firebase config, copy and paste that down to where those brackets are. And let's go ahead and continue console. From here, what we need to do is we need to actually go to this code and we need to click on where it says config on the left-hand side that our agent actually built and then go to firebase.ts. And you can see inside of here, there's this little code that we need to remove and we need to just copy and paste what we just added right here. All right, I finished all of those steps as you can see that our agent told us to do. Now I'm basically gonna say I added my Firebase config and then let's see what it gives us now. It's gonna do some code and set all this up for us and then let's go from there. All right, so now in the top right of our app, you can see there is a, now a sign up button here and it allows us to either sign up with our email or password or Google. And if I click on this, it looks like it tries to pull up the Google Firebase, but it's not working. It looks like the pop-up was blocked. So we need to do a few more things. So what the problem is here is we actually need to add our domains to our Firebase. So I'm basically telling our agent, I'm getting an error. I think we need to authorize the domains. So I'm gonna ask it how we could actually do that. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to deploy our app to its own URL. So this is important because we need to actually authorize a domain of our deployed app. So click that deploy button. All right, so while it's doing that, let's go back to our Firebase, come over to the left-hand side where it says build and then click on the authentication tab. From here, we need to go to the top right where it says settings and scroll down to where it says authorized domains. And we need to add a few authorized domains here. For this, I'm just gonna add all the domains that my agent tells me to. So I'm gonna add this local host domain. It's as simple as copy pasting and then click add. Let's add another one. This is going to be the stackblitz.com. Copy paste that. And then let's do stackblitz.io. For whatever reason, it told me to copy paste that. We just need to do the name stackblitz.io as opposed to those little characters as well. All right, I'm gonna deploy the application one more time. And what I need to do is I need to get the domain of our deployed application and authorize that one. And then it should be working smoothly. 
So I basically asked our agent, do I need to add my custom domain for my deployed project? And it says yes, and it actually gives me the exact domain that I need to copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's go back over to Firebase and just add this last domain here. And we're gonna go ahead and deploy this. All right, if I click on the deployed application, you can see it pulls up its own web domain here. And if I go to the top right and click sign in, we can continue with Google. It pulls up our Google account that we could sign in with. And now it is working smoothly. That's awesome. You can see my account on the top right hand corner. And then we could test our application and we could sign out if we want to. Looks like this is all working perfectly. All right, there we have it. I built an app with AI using Bolt. If you haven't seen already, I made a couple videos on Bolt and every time I use it, I'm just blown away at how good it is. I'm not gonna lie, this isn't something that's gonna completely replace software developers yet, but I do see a point in time in the near future where we could build almost anything with a platform like this. That's why I think it's so important now to learn how to leverage these tools before everybody else Else knows how to use them. With that being said, if you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where I make content for non-technical people looking to learn all about AI. Along with that, make sure to sign up with Bolt. There's a link below. You really don't understand how good it is until you test it out for yourself and build some things yourself. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I'll make sure to see you guys in the next video.